Hey everybody, welcome to DrinkConnector.com. I'm your host, Josh Wade, and this is the internet's place to explore Texas wine. Tonight we're going to the big state of Texas with the help of my good friend uh, Ben Simons at Vinitology.com or at Vinitology on Twitter. He brought together some great people on the internets, the interwebs. Uh, we had participating Vine Geek, Dallas Wine Chicks, Suburban Wino, uh, another wine blog, Wine Wonkit. Uh, there were some fantastic people just contributing to the conversation. Um, I think we had over 50 plus people involved, hundreds of tweets. I learned a ton um, going into this. So uh, we're going to be tasting across different things. And you know, it's great. My first experience with Texas wine. Um, probably a lot of you don't have experience with Texas wine out there. So hopefully you'll be able to learn something tonight. I did say that. Um, they have one strike against this uh, tasting, and that's the fact that it's Texas and the Dallas Cowboys are in Texas. Um, so my judgment may be a little clouded, uh, but we'll see how it turns out. We're going to jump right in. I already poured this one by accident. Uh, we've got a Mandola 2008. Uh, this is their Dry Rosé. It's 90% um, Cab and 10% some other Italian grapes. I'll put in the notes the specifics. Um, but it's very jewelry um, tone color, uh, I think tourmine or <laughs> something like that is what Ben's wife said. Um, but it really is like a piece of jewelry that you would wear, um, you know, in a, in a necklace or a gar stone that you have um, in, in, uh, in a necklace or a ring. So let's give it a sniff. Okay, so I get kind of an earthy strawberry um, note to it. It's real kind of a sweetness that jumps up right in there too. So let's give it a sip. Okay, so it's definitely a dry rosé. I was thinking there'd be some sugar, a little bit of residual sugar, but it doesn't think I don't think there's any in there as far as residual sugar goes. Kind of like a, a tart cherry Jolly Rancher, uh, a little bit of strawberry in there, um, not a lot of acidity. Um, so definitely just kind of a sipping wine, poolside sipping wine. It's ten dollars. Um, pretty refreshing, all in all, um, not a bad offering really for something just to sit out on the deck on a hot summer day or out by the pool, uh, really would be refreshing out there, so it's a pretty good job. Next we're going to move on to the uh, 2008 Sangiovese. This is 100% Sangiovese um, from Bingham Family Vineyards, again Mandola States, be helpful if I took a cork off, it's a little bit of a faux pas there. Um, <clears throat> I, my estimate would be that a lot of the Italian vari varieties of grape would grow really well in Texas. Uh, I know they struggle with some of the farming they have down there with the extreme heat they have. Um, very nice plum um, color in there, but really kind of a, a lighter, um, lighter color. Definitely uh, translucent, um, you know, kind of in the line of a Chianti, of course, because that's what San Giovese uh, grapes are made from. Let's give it a sniff. Okay, so again, you know, an earthy minerality to it. So a lot of soil, a lot of terroir, terroir coming through on it. Um, and also picking up just a, a little bit of red berries. Uh, can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but let's give it a sip. Okay, so this wine's a little thin on the front, thin on the fruit in the very, very front. So there's not a lot happening there. In the back end, there's some good structure. Um, getting some acidity now that it's starting to finish. Um, it's got a decent mouthfeel in it, uh, be a great food wine, just some good pasta food. Um, I think this one was a little um, higher price, like $24, but I'll of course, you know, get all that information correct in the notes. Okay, so next we're moving on to the 2008 Dolcetto. This is also from the Bingham Vineyards, clear out some of my uh, mess here. Um, it's a 13, 13 ABV, aged um, nine months in neutral French oak. Okay, so this one we have a little bit more of a, uh, a darker rust color towards the edges on it. Um, slightly more uh, opaque than the last wine, but really in line with color um, of the Sangiovese. Let's give it a sniff. <clears throat> okay, so I'm getting a little bit of sour fruit in there along with some pipe tobacco. Um, yeah, some cherry, like that sour bean cherry, I suppose, that you might get. Um, you know, nothing too bright, nothing too brilliant, and then that tobacco, um, you know, comes up there uh, in the nose as well. Let's give it a sip. Okay, so again, this wine is a little bit um, still thin on the fruit, so not a lot of dynamic, um, you know, flavors in the mouth. You have kind of some singular dimension 
has some tart cherry, um, like a sweet tart. Um, and then some, there's some decent back end structure, some tannin. You now it's drinkable, uh, it's, it's not a bad wine, and they're starting to show their character across what Texas can do. And I think, you know, for me, what I'm starting to see is that Texas can make some great wine, uh, but what's happening is some of these vines just need some time to age. Uh, the farming practices and the uh, uh, winemaking practices just need time to mature, just like Washington State was back in 1980. Uh, all right, the last wine we have is the uh, non-vintage Mandola Canto Feliz. Um, this is more of a sweet wine, 3.5% residual sugar. Um, the most amount of wine was uh, made of this particular one, 1,500 cases. 12.5% ABV. Um, I can just imagine the sweetness that it's going to have. The color is very um, thin. Uh, and light, still has some, some good purples and dark rich purple tones in there. Reminds me really um, in color of like a Pinot Noir or something, but let's give it a sniff. And so I said definitely get some sweet strawberries, sweet cherries in there, um, and a little bit of minerality that starts to come through, but not a ton happening on the nose. Let's give it a sip. Wow, it tastes like sweet Thanksgiving. Um, some cranberries, some nutmeg, some sugar, cinnamon spice in there. Um, not up my alley really for sweet wines. It's something that I'm just not a huge fan of personally. Um, I think just in reading through the comments to, uh, the other night is this was some people's favorite, especially in group settings where maybe there weren't a lot of experienced wine drinkers in the room or people that just, you know, tend to lean towards sweet drinking wines. All in all, tonight was a ton of fun. I want to thank Ben Simons of Vinatology uh, for putting this together. Um, always a great time, and I know there's a ton of other tasting events coming up with Michigan. Uh, don't forget about um, Wild Wine on June 3rd and just all these other events. And we're going to take all these bottles of wine and the bottles from other uh, nights Chile tasting, have a big old party uh, with a bunch of friends coming over. So life's always meant to be enjoyed with friends, so open up a bottle of wine and drink happy.